it will be very boring presentation. It will be all about hardware. So this is my uh, Hackwick project. So, and to be fast, so I do it like this. How did it all start? My daughter came to me and say, in my brother's room, there is a radio. And I want the radio because I want to hear the hockey matches. Because in Switzerland, we have this, uh, when there is a hockey league, they, they have this multiplex uh, on the radio. So I say, why should I go to the shop? I am an engineer. So let me do it with Raspberry Pi and with spare pieces I had at home. So normally, I use Raspberry Pi Z, uh, Zero, this is Zero Two, which is very wonderful because it has the same memory, but it has four cores, and it's faster, and that is Zero W. So now, but look, when you look at this, where is the sound? Nowhere is the sound. So when you go down, you see that actually there are some, uh, there is some possibility to get dig digital sound. So I say, okay, I will use the digital sound. I buy this card. It's called Hifiberry Min Mini Amp. It's expensive like a hell. It costs 26 Swiss francs plus the delivery. But okay, I bought it because it's my daughter. To have, to have a nice on-off possibility with the radio, I bought Pimoroni on-off shim. And I connected it. But I made a mistake. I, I, I turned the shim, and if you look here, I put five volts here, and this one was okay, because this one has just zero between itself, and but this one got minus five, which basically messed up the Raspberry, because it, it broke the GPIO, uh, the GPIO 19, plus it messed up when you look at the at the card, it messed up also the it messed up also the chip, the decoder. So the problem of this is that it's frame sync, and without frame sync, I2S audio can't work because you don't know which data is which channel. So it just doesn't work. So now what to do? I looked closer and I saw that actually there is a possibility to get analogical audio from the Raspberry Pi. But what to do with the analogical radio? So I, uh, audio. So I just looked, and the analogical audio, there is pulse, uh, pulse uh, with modulation. It means that, for example, when you have 50% UTC cycle, it, it is zero during half of the time, and one during the half of the time, and it makes you a half of the of the voltage, so it's somewhere in the middle. If it's 75 percent, it's more of one, less of uh, zero. If it's 25 percent, so this is how they encode the. Um, if you if you are interested, it's, it looks like this. They are the pulses, and then according to how the sinusoid is, uh, the 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 zeros and the ones are a bit wider. This is a good way to encode, but it's not the best. So Raspberry Pi, they have a mode that you can switch on by audio PVM mode 2, that is so-called Delta Sigma modulation that gives you almost CD-like audio because you, have, you, you don't have the width of the pulse, but you have uh, the density of the pulses, which allows you a pass more data in, uh, in one sample. Now, but that you have to filter it somehow. So how to filter it? So I looked through what Raspberry does. So I looked at the first version of Raspberry Pi, had, uh, takes it, puts it through a low pass filter that is about 50 kilohertz because they are the two uh, resistors that you see, they are in parallel. And the, and, the con and the capacitor, and it's, it's filtering out the, the high frequencies, but it leaves basically uh, 50, 50 kilohertz. Uh, it filters really the, the digital crap from it. And for us human, unless you put it on the ears of your dog, it will not create any problem. So, uh, so I prototyped it. I know it doesn't look very nice. That was my first attempt. 
but it kind of worked. And I could put on the pins the audio and I could put everything. Yeah, this is how one normally starts. It was working, but when I realized that when I put it on my ears, it was, I was getting the audio, but when it was silent, I was hearing the old GPIO. When I started to type, I was hearing everything. Da, da, da. When, when the processor started to do something, I was hearing it. It was kind of nice thing because I remember when I was still on dial-in and we would hear everything that the, that the dial-in was doing. So it was kind of remembering, reminding me my young age, young years, but it was not very good for the audio. So I looked what they do in the next versions, but in the next versions, what they were doing, they actually put, they stabilized the, the, the voltage and they put a gate that is basically copying uh, signals, zeros and ones, is non-inverting, and we stabilized current. But I didn't like this because, because they put 2.5 volts, they had to divide it here so that they don't have big difference, too many pieces. So I looked what they do. Okay, this one, I will show you how it looks on a Raspberry. On a Raspberry, it's basically this part. Here there is the two, the two uh, for each channel, the two uh, resistors. The, the filter is here near to the, uh, the, the, uh, the buffer, the, the gate there. And yeah, this is how it looks on Raspberry Pi A plus. Now, on the Raspberry Pi 3, it's much cleaner because they take 3.3 uh, volts, uh, a gate, uh, a buffer, and then the filter, uh, th those capacitors so that it goes only, uh, you get only alternative current and a resistor so that it's biased to zero so that you don't make punk when you put the, um, the jack in. So I decided to go with this solution. This is how it looks on the Raspberry Pi 3A+. Okay. So, Hackwick. Now, the bad idea of Hackwick was that it was very close to the Chinese New Year. So, there were no pieces that I ordered from AliExpress that were coming any near because there was like three weeks that nothing was shipped. So, I had to work with pieces that were locally deliverable. So, I had to design it. And in Hackwick, I decided I'm going to use this, this guy so I took a kai cut and I designed it. But I had to design it, I didn't have a dual buffer, so I had to design it with two buffers. And any LDO that I found, any, any um, linear, uh, any, any voltage regulator that, so I, this was my design of the filter. There is a big capacitor I put between five volt and zero so that I, I, have, it, I have it nice. Then this, I decided, because it's a little, little, little thing and there was a lot of space on the board, so I put also an amplifier. It's an amplifier, uh, just a normal D-class amplifier. This is very standard, uh, very, very standard way of designing it. Uh, basically, uh, the sheet. Uh, the resistor one and resistor two, they, they don't have the right value because that one I was experimenting with. For completion, this is how I did it. I used, uh, I used the jack that is switchable so that when you, have the, when you have the jack in, it's going to the headphones. When you have it out, it's going to the... Um, now, so the first design was this. I was really proud of myself because it took me some time. I designed it nicely, whatever. And I sent it to GLCPCB that is in China. I waited, 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 and after 15 days of waiting, I got the board and I soldered it. I had to, in the meantime, I had to upgrade myself because it was not possible really to do these little things with, okay, maybe Wojciech, would, he would be able to do it with it, me, no? So I, but then it was already Lunar New Year was already over, so I, I bought myself a T12 soldering station, 
Uh, I didn't tell my wife that I was buying all this kind of thing, so I was intercepting the packages before she sees it. <laughs> I, I, I soldered it all. I was so proud of it. It was actually working. Both channels were there. Now I listen to it, and it's nice. But then I, I listen more, and I still hear in it. See where this thing is coming from. So, what did I do? I had a problem. I reacted the same way as I do when I get the L3 back. I started to panic and I Google. <laughs> so, and I found on Google, and I, and, I, and I found on Google that there are several things that you can do uh, to uh, remove the noise. One of the things is short, shorter tracks. Another thing, put, uh, put ground on, uh, uh, put ground around uh, objects, uh, around the uh, components that are active. Okay. So then I looked at this thing and I said, ah, maybe this three volt thing, it might be an antenna because I realized that when I was going through the, when I was going through, uh, through serial, it was not noisy. When I was doing some things over SSH, it was, I say, maybe it got, so I redesigned the thing. Oh, then, yeah, I redesigned it, I added something. I, I wanted to say, okay, I, by that time, things from China started to come. So I had different LDOs and I had different buffers. So I say, okay, let me redesign it with those things that Rapsbury they use. So I, 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 I added that bypass condensate uh, capacitor because the bypass capacitor is, uh, is, is a requirement for one of the LDOs and it can, be, it can be unconnected for the others. So I redesigned the board and I redesigned it with the same, same, same buffer that they use. Okay. So the LDOs that I used are these four. I try, I say, okay, I will try which which component does it, the noise? The buffers were this one. This is the, this is the, single, uh, this is the single buffer and there are two dual buffers. That one is from Texas Instruments and this one is, is uh, from, from, I think, OSEMI or something. But this one, is actually, this one is actually wonderful, but you can't get it anymore. It's not, it's not really produced so much. You can get it from somewhere uh, writing like 18 months of waiting, so I don't know what it means, maybe never. And for that, I had to design a special footprint because that buffer that came from China, it was SC70, and the other was, was AC74, so I didn't want to have boards for everything, so I designed this, this footprint where you can put the smaller and the bigger together. No, not together, but alternatively. Okay, and in the design, I joined all the um, all, uh, all the grounds, and I designed it the way that, um, and the other thing I did, I put a ferret bit uh, on the power line, just to, I don't know really whether it makes any difference, but as, as usually I'm just trying. So this is the, this is, uh, this is, uh, these are the ground, normally it's five volt plane, but these are the grounds inside it. And from the other side, uh, I actually joined some of the five volts so that it doesn't go too much line, so that it has more. And then there is a ferret bit. It's a little composant that is basically, um, that has uh, different resistance uh, depending on, um, on frequency. Okay. So. And I tried to do it, so I, I realized that the buffers, they were not really so important. The buffers, they were all okay. The problem is LDOs. I had this, this one that I got from the very beginning, it's noisy with everything that is possible. I don't know why. It's possible that it cap uh, captures the signals itself. And this one is, is one that should be, according to the parameters, the least noisy, but it's noisy too. So then this one is that one that uh, Raspberry Pi uses. 
it's okay with the bypass co uh, capacitor, but that one, it's a it's the LDO that I looked at what Hifiberry they use for for stabilizing their voltage, and they use this one. I think they realized that it's the least noisy themselves, and that one is actually making it all noise disappear. Okay, almost. So then after that, I decided. Okay, so I realized I I realized that this. These LDOs were what was creating a problem. Let me redo it also with the buffer, uh, with the with the two single buffers. So I did the the same thing. I designed it just that there are two single buffers instead of, uh, of one dual. Uh, the the two ferret bits there, and everything was perfect, apart one or two boards. That I don't know why. They were still having some. Now I started to be paranoid because I, I bought myself AKG headphones so that I hear it well, and there was still some little noise. And I tell myself, let me try something. So I put a heatsink on the on the Raspberry, and a silence. This is empty. I don't know really why the noise is there, but this helps. So if you once if you have a noise, so these are the babies. These are the different babies with different versions. If if you are interested to see them, I have some prototypes here. Now, as a postscriptum, with all these things, I managed to get from China also the the the, the converter that I that I messed up, and I managed with the new soldering iron, solder it. So even the Hefeberry card of 26 Swiss francs is now working again. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Yes. A quick question, this is great. There, there is no audio hat anymore in the industry because of the supply chain. I mean, we were looking at the, the FE Pi board. It doesn't exist anymore. But some the audio operators. The FE Pi board was an audio board that did a lot of what you were saying. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of people went out of business with the supply chain, so this is fantastic. If you ask the Raspberry Pi Foundation how to get audio out of a Raspberry Pi Zero, for example, they'll always say just use HDMI output as high resolution audio. Did you mm -hmm. ever find a small amplifier that would decode HDMI? Does that even <coughs> exist? No, I, I I heard about it that there are those ones that you can uh, that convert HDMI to an audio jack and um, an and some uh, no uh, normally uh, they, they exist the US uh, HDMI things that convert it to something to VGA and uh, and uh, audio jack and then you can put amplifier on it. I actually have amplifier because when you saw the radio at the beginning. I had old novel swag, and there was one kind of cube that was uh, that was uh, USB 1.1 hub and two speakers. So I, I removed the speakers because they were actually three watt speakers. So I put it there, and with this amplifier, you have two times three watt on four ohm. So I, I used them, and there was an amplifier, so I could have used that amplifier, but then. Look, it's if I tiny inconvenience. yeah, but I mean, if you you see, if you do just the if you do just the audio from there, you have all this part. You you go until here. All this part is is free, and you basically can design. You can just put uh, the babies are here actually, so that people can see it. So there would be until the jack. You you will have you will have that part, and then you have the board that is free. And that, that chip and few capacitors and few, um, a few, a few resistors, and you have, you have two times three watt from the same thing. So it's me, I, I was kind of, I mean, one could do it in different way. But I'm a SUSE engineer, and I am for the hard way. So I mean, it was it was also kind of 
why I did it for Hack Week? Because all the Hack Weeks I was doing, normally in, in upstream, I was doing a lot of reverse engineering of file formats and whatever. But at certain moment, I didn't want to be staring at the screen even during the Hack Week. So I decided that I'm going to do some hardware. Okay. With KiCad, I was staring at the screen the same, but it was not the same staring at the screen. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, it was kind of fun. It was not really, um, it was not, yeah, I don't know how to say, it was not really to save some money or whatever, because by the time I was telling myself, I want to save the Raspberry Pi that I messed up. Why? Because if you, if you go and try to buy a Raspberry Pi now, it's very hard. I needed the, the, the zero 02. And since I live in Geneva, that is near to French border, I found a Belgian distributor that had it and that distributes to France. So I asked my friend who lives in France whether he can accept it because, and this kind of way I was getting the, the thing because there is a supply chain problem, really. But uh, yeah, but this, uh, actually it's funny that all the active component, components are cheap. What was the most expensive of the things is the jack and, and the terminal. <laughs> the jack was actually, is, is almost half of the price of it because it costed me something like three Swiss francs. <laughs> and the terminal is, the terminal is like a half franc. So it's 350 that and all the pieces, they didn't cost me that. The PCB was cheap because I, I made it do in China. Uh, I sent them Gerber to GLC PCB. That's the logo under, but I was covering it so that I don't have right problem uh, since they are not sponsors of our conference. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, they, five of them, it costed two, uh, two, two, two dollars. Another, another five, four, because they were different designs. And the shipment, I got it by the direct uh, slow way uh, that was going through some ship or whatever, and that costed me maybe all, 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 all costed me, I think 12 or something like this. There is another one, there is another one, there is, uh, yeah, I don't know how it's called, I remember, I don't remember, there is another uh, PCB way, PCB way that can do similar things, but actually GLC PCB I like because uh, it, it, they, they kind of don't, charge you extra for having it thinner, having it uh, thicker, whatever. So if you want to see how it looks, this is how the babies, they look uh, live. They are the different prototypes of it. Please don't steal it because I promised it to people, especially to my manager. So they are. These ones, they are not very noisy. They are, they are not noisy at all. I had one that was slightly noisy, but I gave it to Wojciech. <laughs> so, you know, she's a teenager. They are never really happy, but uh, she listens to the radio and I am switching it off normally when I go to the toilet at two in the morning. <laughs> So, so that's it. <laughs>